Whoa, welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back. And Pooch, can't forget the lazy Pooch on the floor. <laughs> the beautiful mascot of the Bloodshot Studio. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> and we are back for part two of the Lumalore Project. And again, if you've never seen this product before, it is kind of mind-blowing. It is a five-stage layering process that you spray on, and your end result is something that you can literally hook up a charge to, and the entire surface will light up. Pretty epic. And for this one, we decided that we must debut it at the World of Wheels here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Bing! We decided to give ourselves a whole whopping two weeks to start and finish this process. First time ever playing around with it. And as I was saying in video one, the learning curve was steep. <laughs> but hey, all's well that ends well, and that looks like success to me. Alright guys, I'm not going to spend too much time jabbering about the whole deal. I do plan in the future to do a whole Lumilore application video so you can see exactly how we apply this stuff down. For now, let's get into the project. My time is ticking away. I should probably get back to play. And here we are with all of my pinstripe tape laid on and ready for some masking and then some spraying and we're gonna kind of have to do this as kind of like a paint by number as there are levels and we're gonna be playing with two colors we're gonna be playing with blue and we're gonna be playing with a black and kind of a gray tone so i guess three i can count three colors and to achieve this we're gonna be using some of my this is just the backing paper for vinyl some frisket this is uh paper based so don't get this stuff too wet because it will bleed through um it's not like these automotive coated papers that will prevent bleed through this will as long as you keep your paint dry don't get it too wet all right and then we've got the masking tape we've got the pinstripe tape which we will be using a little bit of i do believe exacto knives not one but two you never know, you never know. And then rulers, and then we've got our urethanes, which are the automotive paints, and then we've got our water base. Now for the urethanes, we will be thinning and cleaning our paint with a urethane thinner. And with my water base paints, we will be cleaning and thinning our paints with my fantastic water base solution. Yada, yada, yada. We got brushes for urethanes, brushes for water base, so we don't mix them up. Um, some other here's and there's, Q-tips, the ever-present paper towel. And not to forget my ever-faithful Iwata HPC Plus, but I don't run the back. <laughs> Drooping cleaner all over the place. I don't run the back, so it's basically just an Iwata HPC. The plus is having uh, an adjustment in the rear that I don't use. So I have my Iwata HPB as well. Smaller cup size, smaller needle size. But to keep things simple, I think we're going to do this project entirely with my HPC. And I think that is going to get us going. Uh, let's talk about this briefly before we get in onto the actual project. Bear with me. <laughs> there you go. Kick you up on the good old tripod. And now I can explain to you what I was doing here and why. So this is our test panel that we did for the Lumalore paint. We're hooked up to the battery box right now, so I can't go too far with it. So the Lumalore product itself kind of has a gray finish. Once, when it's all said and done, when you got it sprayed on, it's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out and say it. it's not the prettiest, all right? You, you light this stuff up, and it's like, wow, you turn it off, and you're like, nah, <laughs> it loses all luster. But, um, there's ways around that, right? So, what we've done, and we had to play around with this to figure out the best way to do this, and there's a couple different, but I mean, as with everything, there's more than one solution to any problem. But what we decided to do was, 
to keep it thin, whatever we put over top to sort of mask this gray, we want to keep it thin so the light has the most chance to fight through it. And throwing a touch of a metal flake in it hides a lot. So we decided to do a silver. I knew that we were going to play with blue because it lights up blue anyway, so we may as well have some blue in our paint. And uh, the candy blue that you see here, this was done down at my dad's shop. And I should probably say at this point, the person who applied all this Lumalore is my father, the person who does all my base coats, clear coats. And any body work that needs to be done prior to and after my artwork is usually my father. And if you watch my videos, you kind of know that. But uh, we tried the blue candy to see what would happen. And we tried the silver. The silver worked really good. Not a lot of it was needed. And it was silver when the light was off. And when you turned the light on, it was blue. So even the blue candy, which was my original idea, didn't have to happen. Because the silver let enough blue fight through. And we're talking about the background color here. So this was sprayed silver. You can kind of see a line right there, a bit of a corner. This is where the silver ends and this is where the Lumalore begins. I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Probably talking a lot. And then we wanted the gray or the steel, sort of a metal look. So I wanted something that I could paint on when the light was off and it would still look gray. But when the Ooh. light was on, it would look blue. And that was a little trickier than even I had anticipated. I thought for sure that a blue light fighting through a uh, black over top would have given you blue. Eh, not so much. And you can see what I did here. So I started with some darker tones. This is actually black thinned out. Um, can you see that? Uh, there we go. This is black thinned out. This is a gray tone. Um, we'll light this up and you can kind of see... So when we lit this up, this one kind of went a little more purple. I don't know if you can see that. This guy went a little more on the greeny, kind of grainy, sort of dirty end of the spectrum. I, I didn't like that. So I started playing with some blues. And I mean, they look great. That's definitely blue when the light is on. But again, when you crank the light off, now we're dealing with some actual blues and you know I, I want to look like steel I don't want to look like blue so the solution I found was just adding a drop of blue and purple to my black and that gave me the desired effect and then the blackout all right so there are portions of this that we need to black out uh mostly because well, well I dropped the fender and we dented it and it was uh too late in the process to start banging it out so we had to bondo over top of the Lumalore. So we're gonna black that out, so no one will ever know. <laughs> the blackout was actually a lot easier than I anticipated. Where this I thought would be easy and was a little trickier, this I thought would be tricky and was plain simple. Two coats, black, and no light escapes. Man, it's that easy. So, <laughs> let's get to work. I've wasted enough of your time. Yes, time. The thing I have so little of to get this project completed. And uh, about time that we get into some more masking hacks. And guys, when you're working with a double curve, which is what these tanks are, um, relief cuts are what I do to this frisket paper to allow it to move and shape around these double curve surfaces without too much wrinkling and creasing and now you see me just chasing that exacto blade right over top of that pinstripe waste not want not i'm reusing as much of this paper as possible and once we got all the pieces masked it's time to clean that surface and i'm just using my fantastic cleaning slash thinning solution and that should clean the surface nicely now we're going to move in with our urethane paints to start this off with this is my candy blue house color candy blue and as you can see as we do a little bit of real time I'm building it up slowly in transparent layers until I get the desired coverage. Um, this is actually going to be a part of the hidden reveal part of this project. There isn't going to be much because, again, we didn't have much time. But we're going to build up this blue so it's nice and dark. And once you lay this right next to the black, it's almost going to be indistinguishable once the light is off. And then once you kick on the light, this blue is going to come into sight. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> now originally the idea was just to have the blue pinstripe on either side of the black, but I started to look at this surface and say why waste all that volume of light? So I'm going in with a cross pattern, 50-50, one pass overlaps the last by 50% for some nice even coverage. All right, now that we've got the blue all masked off on the gas tank, and you're probably like, I didn't see that. <laughs> you're right, you didn't. But I got her all done on that, so that you can see me do it on this. I wouldn't forget about you guys. Because that's not how I roll. I'm all inclusive, all information, all the time. I know these videos may get a little long, but I'm giving you everything I got. Starting with some 16th inch pinstripe tape. Yeah, it's the thin stuff. And now this is the half inch. <laughs> this is the thick stuff. And now, and now we've got the quarter inch pinstripe tape. So this is right in the middle stuff. <laughs> And you can see I'm using it as a reference for my spacing on these little guys and I will go in and use the measuring tape as well using a combination of every tool available to get this done in a quick and efficient manner. I'm pressing down on that blade just enough to cut through that plastic and not through the base because man that would be a nightmare. And now we are into the blackout process so for this when working on top of the lumilor obviously it makes sense to have the light on so you can see how much paint you need to apply to where the light is no longer visible and that's all we're gonna do slow and steady building it up in nice light layers <laughs> you've heard me say it before y'all hear me say it again this is how i do it um building it up in these light layers allows for a lot of room for error. You can go back and make minor adjustments as you go rather than big adjustments later on. And you may notice I'm wearing my painter's mask when working with these urethane paints. You can see where I peeled back that blue and just blackened out the tip so it does a nice fade into the blue. Just one of those things to give an added three dimension, make it look like it's coming towards you. I'm gonna slap that tape on back down and then we're gonna peel and get ready for the next stage. Aw oh, yeah. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I sure hope so, cause the next part is the gears, the cogs, and all we're gonna do is go in with our black, still using the urethane black, and we're gonna lightly build up our tones for the background. And for this portion, we kinda want this to look like a bit of a hole. So we want it to look like these gears and these cogs are kind of in the background and the BKMS is a little bit more in the foreground. So we're gonna do our tones a little darker to the bottom and on this a little darker to the middles. Turning the light on would make sense to make sure that you're getting the right amount of coverage. Again, this is gonna be a little bit of a hidden reveal, so when the light's off, you don't really see the gears, and then when the light comes on, BAM! What once was a black space is now a deep, dark crevasse filled with gears, the inner workings of something, something or other. <laughs> Back to work. All right, so I've peeled which gears and cogs that I want to be in the furthest, and I've actually laid them on in that same order so that the ones I want to be the brightest were the first ones I stuck on and will be the last ones I peel off. And as you're going down the line, peeling down the ones that are gonna be further and further behind, keep in mind that you are constantly adding a bit more paint. So you don't wanna completely black out your bottom ones because as you go over the ones above them, they're gonna catch a little bit of overspray and they will darken as you proceed to darken the ones above them. I hope that makes sense. And uh, here I got a little too hasty and peeled one a little too quick. So quickly slap her back down and add just enough of a tone to show that one is above and one is behind. In some cases, man, it really doesn't take much and have fun with it. This is where you really get to play with it. And then keep in mind that the ones that are below, there's some drop shadows you saw me do for right here. I'm doing a drop shadow for the K, drop shadow for the B. So it does look like there's a shadow being cast upon the gear or the cog that is in the bottom. Like so. Like you see me do. 
a few times over. I hope that gets you guys a little bit of info on doing that type of layout. Um, feel free to ask me any questions if I missed anything. And here I'm going to show you the next stage of the gas tank just so I can bring you back in on the rear fender and you can <laughs> see the process and how we got there. I think there's a method to the madness. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or maybe it's just madness. Yeah, Alright, moving on. And now you can see me using my handy professional hand cut polyurethane plastic stencil that I made myself. Not very professional like. And uh, believe me when I say the same amount of blue is being applied to this side as was done on the previous side. It's just the glare from the light is not allowing you to see what I done did on that first blue corner. And again, I'm just using the stencil so I'm not getting a lot of blue overspray on the black that I laid down prior to. And as you see, I'm building up the blue a little heavier towards the edge and in between the pinstripe lines, allowing that to fade towards the middle, giving it a glowing effect radiating from the center. And speaking of effects, using the Jedi Air Force to remove some vinyl. Revealing the logo belonging to yours truly. And uh, cause we're doing the Lumalore Canada, representing the Great White North, I cut just a little maple leaf out of the vinyl. We're gonna slap her on down there. Yeah, pretty much this whole section is just some uh, shameless self promotion. <laughs> I have no shame. As you can probably see. And as you can probably see, we're just going in with some transparent blues. Just enough so that there's a color difference between the background and the letters. And now, once again, using the shield, stencil shield, whatever you want to call it. We're pretty lax here on this channel. And we're just getting in some blue tones for the top of the sort of step down of this kind of Tron sort of game board pattern that we got going on for our background. Lights on, lights off. Lights on, lights off. And now I'm pretty happy, so we are going to go ahead and peel all of that fine line. It's not all of it, just the interior parts. Again, this just helps to make it look like it's got some depth so that it's kind of moving away. It looks like it's kind of, again, another crevasse, crevice that we're looking into. And just a bit of a blue tone. Again, to differentiate it from the base, the silver base that we have below. And that's it. That's, that's us. We got the blue all done. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free. And now I'm going to once again show you the gas tank and its finished product so that you get an idea of where we are going with this bad boy here. And in case that moved a little too quick for you, we are moving into the steel section of this. And we are going to start with our drop shadows. Now this is again gonna help to give it that bit of a 3D effect where you want it to look like you've got some shadows. You can see one piece is hanging above the piece below it and casting a shadow. Play around with it, have some fun. You'll notice on the step up of this part that the shadow is a little more extreme and where it kind of steps down, it kind of fades away as it would do in real life. Like there was something protruding over a precipice, bringing out the linguistical prowess there. Yeah, I just broke out the dictionary. And uh, here we're going in with some reflection lines onto the steel. Now we have moved away from the urethane paints. I am going in with all my drop shadows and all my steel tones. This is my custom mixture of five drops of auto air opaque black along with one drop of auto air purple and one drop of the rowny transparent blue thinned out to the desired consistency. And here I'm just using a straight edge shield or a business card and getting in some of the three dimensions for this beveled piece of steel we got going over and under all these different graphics. Now when painting your 3D bevel, it is very important that you pick your light source and you stay consistent. So with this one, I've actually picked a light source from the top. We're gonna put that right, bing! And everything else is gonna be fading away or casting shadows from 
that light source. And if it's something you've never done before and you're having a bit of trouble, I mean, you can always do a quick sketch to get an idea of how the light's supposed to reflect. And uh, test sample, test sample, test sample until you got something that you are comfortable and confident with. And now you can see we have pretty much all of our tape removed. We are going in with a few more shadow tones. The BKMS actually has a pinstripe still around the border. So that will get peeled and you'll see the brightness of that. And here we're going to go in with a bit of a drop shadow for the bloodshot lettering. Make it look like it's floating above. Peel back a couple of the last remaining sections here and you can start to see some of the color and tone differences and some of the 3D areas I've been referring to. And the last drop shadows we're going to add to this bad boy is for this Harley Davidson lettering. We want it to look like it's floating above, so where it's floating above the X, the black X, it'll be nice and tight. Where it's floating above the steel, because now we've got a bit of a further gap, it should be a little softer and a little further away. Doing these drop shadows is what really starts to give some 3D aspects to these projects. And with a relatively simple process, you can get some pretty extreme effects. Here I'm doing the same thing, just a little bit of a drop shadow in these blue areas just to make it look like it is countersunk in the black and back to the blade to peel back the last bit of lettering and the Harley Davidson Willie G skull. And we're going to do this real time. If you've made it this far in this video, this is one of my longer ones. I know you guys ask for it. I know it's hard to always give it, but for this skull, we're going to do this whole thing in real time. My gift to you. So come along and see how I do. <laughs> and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. By controlling the amount of paint you are spitting out through your airbrush, and building it up nice and slow, repetitive motions in light, transparent layers. My paint is fairly thinned out, guys. Unless I'm doing some base coverage, I am working with a really thinned out paint. And I know you want some numbers, but I thin it and thicken it as I go. Sometimes you want it a little thicker, sometimes you want it a little thinner, and you kind of just... No. <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't get much more vague than that. <laughs> Spend some hours with your airbrush. Get to know it. Get to love it. It'll show you what it wants. It'll... You'll learn what she needs, how to keep her happy. And again, just building it up, building it up, building it up nice and slow. When we get into these tighter sections, even less paint is being applied but still in a repetitive fashion where I'm moving over that area building it up until I'm happy with it I know this gets repetitive I'm kind of doing this on purpose I want to beat this into your noggins it is kind of the whole way that an airbrush performs I see a lot of guys struggling when they're painting even the simplest graphics because you're just allowing far too much paint to come out of that brush at any given time. Look at the finger. Watch carefully. All I am doing is sweeping that airbrush back and forth over my surface and just pulling my finger back in the middle of that sweep. Big area, little area, all that changes is the duration of time that I keep that finger pulled back the distance that I'm moving that finger stays the same. Small amounts of paint, guys. And if that's the only lesson you take from this video, then you're ahead of the game. <laughs> and there you have it. Lumilore in all its light emitting glory. And let me know what you guys think of this one. I'm always interested to hear your thoughts. Alright guys, that's it for that one. This was an intense process. Took me a little bit longer than anticipated. What else is new? <laughs> but it's all about the end results. And if you can't tell by the smile on this guy's face, 
I'm pretty happy. Um, this is gonna be in the world of wheels in like five days. So, three days. Oh my god, three days. <laughs> so, I'm super pumped. I'll uh, probably do a walkthrough video, which will probably come before this. Yeah. If you haven't seen the walkthrough, go check it out. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be some amazing rides of the world of wheels, not just this little crossbones Harley Davidson. This is gonna be a head turner for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. If you have any questions, drop me a line. If you have any comments, hit me up. Um, if there's anything that you could suggest if you've worked with this stuff before and you have some recommendations, I'm always here to absorb information. I'm a big wet sponge. Never stop learning, never stop growing, never stop pushing yourself, never stop trying new things. And that brings me to the panel. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit more paint on there than the last time you saw it as the progress went. I had to make some adjustments and the paints and the colors so it's great to have something that you can use as a test panel if you've never worked with that kind of paint before words to live by test panels till you're sure all right guys oh, my arms getting tired holding up this camera I'm tired in general I'm gonna go hit the hay this is going to get sent off for clears and assembled and in the show by the weekend. Oh man, I can't wait for that. <laughs> All right, as always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. And feel free to peruse the Bloodshot Spreadshirt merch page and support the cause by picking yourself up a brand new uniform, couple new designs, and don't forget guys, we've got the airbrushing hacks, airbrushing for beginners, and plenty of tutorials. Tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray.